My journey with working for justice and for reconciliation in our country uh, obviously put me in touch with different people of other faiths, uh, Muslims and Jews. And I remember, uh, and this is how my first visit to Palestine happened. I, I had a Jewish friend. She invited me to Israel and said, uh, could you come along to Israel and uh, just see for yourself? One of the things I did uh, in that first visit uh, was I was able to participate in an environmental project. Uh, went to a forest uh, which was called the South Africa Forest, planted by um, South African, well, sponsored by South African Jews uh, as an environmental uh, project. And I thought this was brilliant. Uh, was able to also plant a tree at this forest. But I kept being worried by the fact that I wasn't hearing the story of the Palestinians. So I asked my Jewish hosts, how come I don't hear the other side of the story? So my second visit to Israel came as a result of invitations from my Palestinian friends. On my second visit, I heard another story. I heard that actually that forest that I planted a tree at used to be a Palestinian village. And the village was destroyed and people moved forcibly out of there. And so the forest, the trees that we were planting in a sense, served the, the effect of erasing the memory of that village. So I visited that forest again and looked for the tree that I planted, hoping that somehow I could uproot it. And so it taught me that it is important to ask questions about these things. So we discussed with my Jewish friends at home, and, and I said, you know, for me, this looks like apartheid. Uh, what I saw there, it actually is what apartheid was like. Apartheid had forced removals. People were forcibly removed from their communities at gunpoint. That's the story of those Palestinians who were moved from that village. They call it the Nakbar. And so we talked about whether or not Israel was an apartheid state. I said, between you and I, I am black, you are white South African Jews. Who do you think has more credibility in deciding whether or not whether this is apartheid? To this day, I continue to love Israel. I continue to cherish everything I know about God. I was taught by the people of this land. And so I, I continue to love and pray for Israel. But it is precisely because we love Israel that we must help Israel recover a sense of the God of justice who uh, they revealed to us. The checkpoints were a traumatic experience for me. It reminded me of how we used to go through similar uh, points of harassment, humiliation, at uh, the hands of the military, forced removals, discrimination. And I said to them, you know, from South Africa, whenever I saw a picture on television, of a young person with a stone coming against a military vehicle, automatically I side with the, with the young boy. Because I've been like that, I used to throw stones. And so it is that when I hear that this story of Palestine and Israel is complicated, it does make me 
remember, I heard that before, and often the people who are victims of it are very clear. It is only complicated to those who want to confuse themselves, but the people who daily pay the heavy price of it, there's nothing complicated. It is a, a system that must end and end yesterday. Thankfully, the people of Palestine are very clear in terms of what it is and how we may support them in their struggles. And I, I, we in South Africa, we found that very helpful when people around the world asked us, how can we come alongside you? I think that would be important for us to hear how we may support the cause. Thank you.